During World War II, the US military had to protect their planes and pilots. Don't worry, you're in the right place, this is a video about learning to code. There was a fine balance here, because if the plane was armoured too much and too heavy, that would slow it down, but if it wasn't armoured enough, obviously that left it vulnerable. So what the army had to do was decide what are the most vulnerable places of the plane that we should use armour on. And you know, I'm not trying to say that nerds always save the day, but they called in the statisticians. And they had this idea that if they could analyse the bullet heat maps on these planes that returned, that would show them the most vulnerable and most hit parts of the plane to armour. I'm curious if you can spot the problem with this way of thinking already, but basically they looked at the heat maps and they noticed that the wings got hit a lot and the body, but the engine was pretty much scot-free according to these heat maps. But of course, they were only looking at the planes that made it back to the base. The planes they really should have been worried about were the ones that never made it home at all because they got hit in the most critical area, probably the engine and the fuselage in this case. There's a whole story here about how a statistician challenged the status quo and thought differently about this problem to arrive at the answer which was to armour the engine. But you're probably at this point wondering what this has to do with learning to code. Well, today we call this insight about only looking at the survivors survivorship bias and I think it's extremely relevant to new programmers. You hear these incredible three month success stories. You hear about the pastor turned developer or the mum who read Java books in one hand while pushing her pram to get a job in record time. But the only reason you hear these stories is because they're outliers, because they're remarkable, because they're successful, because they survived. The sad or maybe encouraging reality, depending on how you want to look at it, is that every year there are surely tens of thousands of people who say something like, yep, I want to learn to code, I like the look of that career, they dabble with it, they make some progress, but they always give up. Nobody is writing stories or recording podcast interviews with these developers. And whilst we always look at these outliers who probably aren't very much like us, we should probably actually be looking at the reasons why most developers fail in course correcting or armor our plans against those likely errors. It's this classic thing, right, where history is kind of written by the winners. If you never made it out alive, you never get to tell your story. And, you know, if you're telling your own story about being successful, no one's really going to fact check it and challenge you to explain exactly the situation you are in when you get started. And this is the main point of the video. The majority, if not every person I've ever met who's or interviewed on the podcast or spoke to through my work in the community, who has got a job in record time, they normally had a series of advantages. And to be clear, I'm not for one second trying to cheapen their accomplishment. I think oftentimes these are the same people who bring a lot of dedication and clarity to their planning and overall just are very dedicated and determined to be successful. It's just that the story normally goes one of two ways. Maybe they studied computing 20 years ago and they've dabbled with it every holiday since, you know, like they've not completely given up, but they've not taken it seriously yet either. Or maybe they have some kind of academic background and they are just exceptional at teaching themselves things because they've gone through this process a few times and they have this courage about the fact they can learn something if they put their mind to it. I think if you're teaching yourself a skill like coding for the first time and you've never learned something of this caliber, there's such a higher hurdle to overcome because you're also having to learn how to learn in a way what is conducive to yourself. So that's one side of the spectrum. I think on the other, when it comes to actually getting a job, something that's not spoken about enough is that not every opportunity is made equal. For example, there are some entry-level jobs what are quite hard to get. Like they take many years of experience, you're really competing with the best, and the compensation and the prestige and the opportunities are in line with that. But there are also easier ways to get your first opportunity. I don't for one second mean to say that it is easy or trivialize it because I think getting any job as a developer is a great accomplishment and it's very important you get on that ladder. But we're talking in relative terms now and it's a lot easier to get a sort of entry level position for a low salary at something like a web agency compared to getting a job at Google, for example, which some people aspire to. There is advice out there like be so good they can't ignore you and that applies if you're going for these prestigious jobs. But I think for many of us, there's a much clearer path to getting paid to learn, which is to be so teachable they can't ignore you. There are many companies out there that will hire you earlier in your journey, granted for a reduced salary, 
if you can demonstrate your potential. And potential very simply is your competence, plus your enthusiasm, plus commitment, plus your humility. And it just seems strange to me that we celebrate these training opportunities the same way we celebrate perhaps people who have you know, made a decision to wait a few years before going into the job market for whatever reason. Maybe they're attracted to the prestige and they want to start off their career on a very positive note, working at a company people recognize. And I think that's totally fair. Or maybe they just can't justify a situation where they get paid a less salary for their potential. They need to straddle their existing job alongside learning to code for a bit longer before they make that jump. And when that happens, they'll be a bit more ready to go into these harder opportunities. The fact remains we're all on our own individual paths and comparing ourselves with others, except to get inspiration or look for opportunities to help, I don't think it really serves us because you never really know what's happening. And only looking at the things that successful developers have done and comparing yourself with that gap that you have or perceive between you and them it's just unproductive. I think instead you should be looking at, okay, if I fail at learning to code and getting a job, why would that be? And you might sort of reflect on your plans and your study schedule and think that you're not putting in enough inputs, like you're really struggling to carve out time to focus on your projects and your learning every day. And so at least now you can face that and come up with a plan to counteract it somehow. It's better sometimes, I think, to look at the challenges the developers have faced rather than their specific accomplishments. Because, you know, you can't really do much about their accomplishments, but you can look at the challenges and use that to inform yourself about what struggles you might face, and then you can come up with a plan and a mindset to overcome that. In my experience, it really comes down to your motivation, which can be either intrinsic, which I think is good for developers, or extrinsic, which is effective in the short term, but doesn't really burn very long not long enough for you to learn to code and get a job. So extrinsic motivation is when you do something because of an external factor. It could be recognition, prestige, to make someone proud. Extrinsic motivation can also be that you do something to avoid a consequence, like disappointing someone, for example. I do imagine, and I can only guess, that the thousands of developers who will never know because they tried and gave up, they relied probably on extrinsic motivation. Maybe their motivation was to get a prestigious job that their family and friends would respect and earn a good salary. Compare this to intrinsic motivation where you do something because you genuinely enjoy it and you want to. Yeah, like salary matters to every developer, but for intrinsically motivated developers, it's really about earning enough that you can live comfortably and continue to save and invest in your retirement, for example. Extrinsic motivation can work in the short term. Like you might feel you want to complete a project so your teacher doesn't tell you off or something, or maybe you want to impress somebody, but it doesn't really burn very long and learning to code takes a lot longer than most people think. You need to hone in on your intrinsic motivation to get there but it's quite challenging because extrinsic motivators tend to be loud and obvious like consequences or you're pursuing some recognition that's very bold but intrinsic motivation tends to be a lot more gentle and at the same time it's more powerful. Let's talk a little bit about how to unlock the power of your intrinsic motivation without sounding too much like a self-help coach. I think it all starts with a question why. Why do you want to learn to code? If you're going into the new year, into 2023, and you're thinking and planning about the new year, the biggest question you can answer is why do you want to become a developer? And the truth is you might not have the answer right there, but you should have an inclination. I've been giving some reflection to my own journey and trying to answer what my intrinsic motivation was. I've had to write it down because I want to be clear. And so when I reflect on my journey, I was deeply internally motivated to learn to code and push through the challenges because I knew if I could do it well, I could be free to do work that I find meaningful with people I respect and get paid well enough that I don't have to leave experiences on the table like living in London or traveling. I also didn't very much like the idea of wasting any potential I might have had. I think above everything, and I know a lot of developers will relate to this, I deeply enjoyed solving problems and I deeply enjoyed getting better at something meaningful. That is what kept pushing me month over month, even when I got rejected from jobs, even when I was having a bad tough time because I couldn't learn something, or probably I was comparing myself to other people feeling a bit bad. This is the thing, I came back to it because I enjoyed it. Honestly, I could not have articulated this so well seven or however many years ago when I was on this journey for the first time, but I hope that by my being a little bit vulnerable and talking about that out loud, it can spark some inspiration as to, you know, the reasons you got started. Maybe we're similar in that respect. 
I want to wrap up here, but not until I leave you with a question, which is, what is your internal reason for learning to code that you can remind yourself of when times get tough? I would highly encourage you. This has been quite a rambly conversational type of video, which I don't normally produce. You can check out some of our more polished stuff on the side, but going into the new year, I would really love it if people commented below with their intrinsic motivators and how you're thinking about coding. If you're doubting yourself, maybe you're thinking, I'm watching this video and I feel like maybe I am extrinsically motivated. There might be something there. You should comment that as well because maybe we can help each other and this thing happens in the comments. It's a magical thing where we can each use the comments to spark the next idea and see where we end up. Listen, don't compare yourself to others. Make sure you look at these three month success stories with a balanced view and try your best to hone in to your intrinsic motivation because I think it's the number one thing apart from developing systems, which you can watch a video about that up here that will influence your success as a developer. I've been Alex Burkett. Thank you so much for watching. 